Hello YouTube, it's Jim Chapman on American Air Gun Hunter. Today I'm going to do something a little different. Rather than going out and hunt, I'm going to talk a little bit about a, uh, a, a subject that comes up, a question that comes up quite a bit on my YouTube channel and articles I write and so forth. And that's what do I think is the best small game caliber. And uh, I'm going to answer this question from my own perspective and uh, based on the type of hunting I do, I'm going to uh, tell you what I like and why I like it. And a little bit of a spoiler alert, um, my preference is 25 or 30. So for you guys that like 177 or 22, um, again, I'm not saying that this isn't a, a completely valid um, caliber for your hunting rifle. Arguably more game has been taken with a 177 and 22 over the years than any other caliber uh, for air guns. So uh, in no way am I disparaging or saying that it's not a good selection, but for me it's not the best. And, and again, I'm gonna explain why. I'm going to stick to four calibers. Uh, in, in the uh, early days of air gunning, the standard calibers were 177, 20 caliber, 22. Uh, over the years, 20 has kind of faded out for some springers where I think it's actually a, still a very viable um, caliber selection. Uh, I like it a lot in, in springers. Not as much with PCPs, and there are some reasons for that. We'll explain a little bit later. Um, but we also see many more 25 caliber guns available, and, and more recently, 30 caliber are becoming more and more common. So let's look at the standard calibers uh, and, uh, and look at what they have to offer. The 177 uh, in 22, they really harken back uh, to uh, the days of spring piston air guns and also lower power air guns. Uh, and uh, arguably, I, I still think that that's the best uh, caliber selection for most spring piston air guns is either a 177 or preferably a 22. Um, and also, as the first PCP started to come over, they were being manufactured in uh, Europe and the UK, and they were uh, limited in the power that they could output. Uh, you know, in the UK, they have the uh, FAC, uh, a gun to be legal without a, a firearm certificate has to be under 12 foot-pound of energy. Um, and, and that went a long way in defining what calibers work best. If you get a 177 at 12 foot-pounds of energy, that's fairly flat shooting within, say, the 35 to 40 yard range. Um, and even a 22, which is a, a heavier projectile that's at a lower velocity, and remember, the longer a, a pellet is out there, um, the more time gravity has to work on it. So I normally am talking about power, not velocity, but in this case, the velocity has a lot of impact because the longer the pellet's out there, the more time gravity works on it, the more it will start to drop uh, with, with distance. So uh, even at 12 foot pounder, 22 is okay, though at 35, 40 yards, you may have to deal with some trajectory, but you know most shooters can, can do that without a, a problem. Um, if you use a 25 or a 30 caliber pellet, at, uh, at 12 foot pound, it's like pitching a brick underhand. The thing has this big loopy trajectory with, with the scope on, but it's really fast pellet drop. Um, so the, the 25 and 30 aren't effective in those guns. So if I'm shooting a, a, an FAC gun, I'm gonna go with the 177 or 22. That's, that's just it, I'm not gonna use a 25. Uh, definitely not going to use the 30, but I'm not even going to use the 25. Um, so, so, you know, the gun you use has a lot to do with it. But as the PCP started to get more powerful that we were getting, um, and you could compensate for that, that uh, drop by increasing the velocity, if you don't have to worry about the energy output of the gun, you can compensate. So, so in the early days, that, that perception that uh, a 25 caliber air gun it was going to have a really fast drop in energy is, isn't a valid argument against it anymore because you just up the velocity, up the energy, and you can get a flatter trajectory with a, a larger caliber um, gun. So um, the, there are some other um, things that you need to look at. If you take a 177 and you do increase the, uh, the velocity uh, and you increase the weight of it, uh, you can often get what's called the ice picking. The, the pellet has such a small surface area traveling with so much momentum, it'll just pass right through uh, a game at, at close range. So you end up getting a, an over penetration, you don't effectively dump the energy. So uh, even just increasing the weight or the velocity of a 177 doesn't necessarily give you the, the gains that you would want. 
22 on the other hand, that's a good trade-off. You're starting to increase the uh, the velocity, the weight, you get a flatter trajectory, uh, you get uh, a, a good penetration, um, and, and you get a fair dump of energy on, on target as, as well. When you get into the 25 and 30 though, you're dealing with a, a, a much larger surface area and a lot more mass with the, the pellet, and as it hits, it imparts a lot of impact. It's, it's a very, uh, a, a, a very obvious um, increase, a step up in terminal performance uh, over, say, a, a 22, definitely over 177, and a 30 caliber again, that gives an, an increased uh, impact. So one of the things I like about the 25 and the 30 is that besides in, imparting more energy on target, it also sheds energy more slowly. So if you're shooting a longer range, so if I'm out on a prairie dog shoot and I'm going at 100, 125 yards, um, the, the 25, even though the muzzle, energy, uh, muzzle velocity is lower than say a, a, a typical 22, at 100 yards, it's a higher velocity than the 22. It, it maintains that, that, uh, that energy, maintains that velocity for, for longer. Uh, so I, I like it for long range shooting as, as well. So I get both the, the impact and I get uh, the, uh, the, the longer range capabilities. Now, one of the things that you'll often hear about um, using a larger caliber or a question I get for a larger caliber is, and it, to me it's an odd one, uh, isn't that too much gun uh, for, uh, for small game? I mean, you don't need a 25 to kill a squirrel and you don't need a 25 to kill a squirrel. And as everything I just said indicates, I mean, game has been taken with 177s and 22s for, for a lot of years. But, why too much energy? If, if you are able to more efficiently anchor an animal, if you're able to reach out a bit further, if you have a bit more latitude, whether you take a head or a body shot, um, why wouldn't you do it? And, and, you know, one argument that I've heard is, well, there's too much meat damage, and that's not true at all. There, there's no, almost no difference in the meat damage between a, an animal shot broadside with a, a 25 uh, and one shot with a 177. And, and here's another thing that you gotta, you gotta keep in mind. Um, when you, you ask if it's too much a uh, gun, to use a 25 uh, air gun on, on squirrels. I've never heard anybody ask, is a 22 rimfire too much gun for small game hunting? That is the gold standard for, for small game hunting, at least in North America. And the typical 22 rimfire is gonna put out twice the power level of, of a 25 or a 30 caliber pellet. Um, and and uh, it's gonna do more meat damage, especially if you're using hollow points in the rimfire, but it does more meat damage. There's more hydrostatic shock than with a, an air rifle. So th this whole question about a 25 or 30 being too much gun is, to me, it's just kind of absurd. But there's another key factor is that besides being able to, to shoot small game in denser cover and know I'm going to anchor it and be able to recover it. Uh, besides being able to reach out a, a bit further with a, a, a larger caliber pellet, um, the, the other thing that I like is that I use my guns, my, my small game guns, for, for larger game than they do in a lot of the world. I mean, I, I may be out on a rabbit hunt with my 25 or my 30 and, and have an opportunity to take a, a small pig. I pick my game more carefully. I'm not going to go after a massive boar, but a small pig, uh, you know, at uh, say a 40 pound pig at 50 yards, I know I can drop a 25 or 30 pellet right down its ear and it, it'll just drop it on the spot. So I like the flexibility that I get. That that. 25, it's not too much for all the reasons I just said, it's not too much for, for rabbit or squirrel hunting, but it gives me that little bit of, of extra um, insurance and comfort if I'm gonna shoot a, a hog or a coyote or a, a fox, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head shoot it. So I like having that latitude, and that's one of the reasons I like the, um, the 25 and 30. Now, I've got a lot of guns. My, my gun room uh, is just full. I've got about 100 PCP rifles of, of different calibers, so I have different guns to shoot, and I can, I can select calibers uh, depending on where I'm going to go and everything else, but if I had one small game gun uh, and that's what I was going to use, it would most likely be a 25. Cost of pellets, it's a little bit higher, but come on. I mean, if, if you can afford to to buy the gun, um, the difference of, of a dollar or so for a, for a 150 pellets is not going to, uh, I, I think it's not gonna dissuade you from using the, uh, the caliber. 
Um, so anyway, that, that's the reason that my preference is 25 or 30. Now between the 25 and the 30, there for me it gets a little bit murkier uh, because the, the 30 uh, is getting a bit more, uh, more powerful. Um, but really, um, there, there's not a downside. Uh, cost, again, is a little bit higher. There's a little less selection of 30 caliber pellets, but that's changing. And being able to buy online, we can pretty much get anything we want anywhere we are, at least, again, in, in North America. It may be different in other parts of the world, but we don't have a problem with that. So, so for all those reasons, I've gravitated towards the, uh, towards the 25 or 30. And uh, I'll, put up a, I'll put up a link up here to some of the articles I've written over the last two or three years where I've gone into more details on specific hunts of looking at the 25 and the 30 uh, for, for small game. Now that we've talked about uh, the, uh, the um, difference in calibers, let's look at a few of the pellets uh, that, uh, that I'm using right now, uh, the 25s and 30s. We'll go through and, and look at those. Now, a Diablo pellet is what most people think of when it comes to air guns. It's characterized by a flail skirt, kind of like a badminton birdie, that has a narrow waist and a head of different configurations. The heads are usually sized to, to fit snugly into the barrel, while the skirt's typically only lightly touching the rifling. Uh, the result is that most of the surface area of the pellet isn't touching the barrel, uh, which in turn reduces friction. There are a number of different head configurations used in uh, Diablo-style pellets that uh, include round nose, also called dome pellets, hollow points, field points, hollow points with integrated polymer tips, wad cutters, and a number of other hybrids. Uh, for most shooting applications, I generally use a round nose design, though the polymer tips can be effective in the right situation. And I've been using the Hades more and more. That might become probably my default pellet uh, because accurate out of a lot of guns, um, especially in the 25 and 30s, very accurate. Uh, and uh, it has great terminal performance on gain. So again, I, I see that maybe replacing um, the, uh, the dome pellet, um, except for really long range shooting. The skirt's important in that it will uh, obturate, that means expand when the volume of the compressed air uh, hits it uh, from behind, with the result that the skirt uh, enlarges and engages the barrel's rifling along with the pellet head. And this imparts spin in the projectile, and, and that uh, results in stability and ultimately influences the accuracy of the rifle pellet combination. Um, the second result of the flaring skirt is that it creates a tight seal between the pellet and the barrel, which optimizes the efficient use of the uh, small volume of air. Um, over the last few years, several of the major pellet manufacturers, and, and JSB in particular, uh, have started producing larger pellets in 25, 30, 303, 35 uh, caliber, even some 45s. Now, everything we said about the 25 caliber applies to the 30 caliber. I do think it's worth noting that the, uh, as the pellet uh, diameters increase from uh, 0.25 to 0.30, uh, that that uh, slight increase in the diameter has an exponential increase on the weight. So a, a typical 25 caliber pellet may weigh 25 grain, whereas a typical um, 30 caliber pellet might weigh 50 grains, almost twice as much. As a rule, with regards to the head configuration, I use dome pellets for general purpose. And some of them, such as the JSB Exacts, uh, are accurate out of most of my guns. They have very good accuracy profiles in most guns, and the terminal performance is, is quite good on small game. So I, I, I do like these, these pellets. However, I have to say the JSB Hades, that um, new type of hollow point, the, the head, if you look at it, um, looks almost like a radiation safety symbol. Uh, it's, it's got a somewhat strange configuration, but uh, the terminal performance can't be argued with. It's just in, incredible how hard hitting that is on small game. And that may move into uh, to the role of my, my standard uh, hunting pellet. The poly mags I use for lighter quarry, where I really want to watch out for over penetration, they give a good balance of both penetration and expansion. They don't over penetrate. The slugs I use for tough game, uh, if I'm going out specifically to hunt pigs with my 25 or 30, I'll, I might well use a, uh, a slug. 
uh, and I use it for longer range. I, I found on some of my prairie dog shoots, for instance, that uh, at longer range, when I'll be shooting typically out to 120, 100 to 125 yards, uh, the, the slugs do uh, quite well, especially if I'm using a rifle that has a slug liner. The uh, slugs, it's worth uh, mentioning, uh, are not typical rifle slugs in that uh, they usually have very deep hollow points and they have a concave base, uh, which both uh, serves the same purpose as the skirt on the, on the pellet, uh, but moreover, it lightens up the, uh, the pellet so that you have a, um, a, a longer pellet, but still with a lighter weight. So it combines those two uh, attributes. The selection of 30 calibers is more limited than 25, but it's expanding all the time. Um, I pretty much use the same type of projectiles with the 30 as I, I did with the uh, the 25 caliber, and the same discussion I think are, are applicable whether you're talking about 25 or 30 caliber. Okay, now that we've had a chance to talk a little bit about the the um, the uh, caliber, we've looked at some of the pellets. Let's look at some of the guns that uh, that I use in 25 and 30, and I'll I'll give you a couple words about these guns, what I like about them, and why I, I use them. We'll start off with my Profit 30. Uh, really like this gun a lot. Uh, it's a, uh, a tactical style bullpup, bottle forward design, kind of in vogue right now. Um, this uh, gun is dead accurate, um, and it's accurate out to, I mean, I shoot out to 100, 125 yards. The 25 caliber version of this is what took the EBR 75 uh, yard uh, competition year before last. Uh, I had that actually that actual gun shot, and I think this the 30s is as accurate as 25. Um, I have the power set up at about 80 foot pound. This gun is fully adjustable. Uh, I've got the extended plenum uh, that increases the regulator uh, volume on on my gun. It has an exceptional trigger. The side lever auto indexes the seven shot magazine flawlessly. Very smooth, fast to cycle. It's on the left side. The cocking handle's on the left side, which is unusual, but once you get used to it, it really allows you to, to cycle the action quickly without breaking your cheek welder coming off target. Uh, the gun has a 500cc uh, carbon fiber tank with a quick fill for, uh, for, for hookup. And uh, this is great because with a gun that's generating this much power on, on these larger caliber pellets, having that additional air uh, lets you find a balance of, of getting the highest power and also, also still keeping a, a good uh, shot count. Next is another favorite. This is the FX Impact. I have both the 25 and 30 barrels, and that's really a, a great feature when you're able to switch barrels on a gun. Uh, and uh, especially if a gun's more expensive, it lets you you get a lot more gun for your money that way. Um, and it has a lot of the same attributes as what I've just described for the uh, Profit. Um, it's uh, it's fully adjustable. It's a regulated gun, fully adjustable, uh, and uh, again. That becomes more important if you're going to start swapping around the barrels. Uh, and uh, I've also got a, a barrel liner for this, uh, specifically for shooting shooting slugs. The uh, next rifle is the LCS SK19, which is a uh, semi-auto hammerless design rifle. It has a decidedly tactical design, uh, and uh, what's unique is it comes in select fire, and uh, it can be shot in either semi-auto or full auto and it has a very high rate of fire. Now, I wouldn't suggest the full auto as, as a hunting gun by any means, but it's fun to plink with. However, the semi-auto gives you fast follow-up shots. I think it's great for predator hunting, varmint hunting. Uh, and uh, of course, it wouldn't really mean much if it wasn't accurate, but this rifle is exceedingly accurate, at least in the 30. I haven't shot the 25 or the 22 version, but the 30 is just uh, dead on. It's, it's uh, quite impressive. Now granted, these first three guns I've showed you have a, a fairly high price tag, but you don't have to spend a lot of money to, to get a 25. Uh, next up is the Avenger uh, 25. It comes in 177, 22, and 25, but I think the 25 is just great on this gun. And it's only, it's only about $350. It's really feature rich. It's a regulated gun. The regulator is fully adjustable, again, letting you really dial it in for the, uh, the type of uh, projectile you're, you're going to use. Next is, uh, is my, uh, my FX Maverick. This is in 30. Also, it has, uh, it has multiple barrels, but I've got the 30. Very compact. It's accurate, powerful, and, and quiet uh, as it 
it stands and reliable. It's got a reliable and easy to load magazine. And I couple that with uh, the proprietary FX30 caliber pellets. Um, I always check around, even, even if there's a pellet made specifically for the gun, I still check because some guns just like other pellets better. Uh, and in this case, actually, it, it does like these FX30s. Um, I've also uh, put the Donnie FL suppressor on this gun. So on top of the shroud, this comes out being whisper quiet and having a, a 30 caliber gun that's whisper quiet uh, opens a lot of, of opportunities up for Predator. So just to, to summarize, um, 177, 22, completely valid um, calibers if that's what you have and that's what you want to hunt with or that's what you prefer for, for whatever reason. Nothing wrong with it. It's, it's an effective, it's an effective, they're effective, they're efficient calibers, no problem. For me, the kind of hunting I do where I go out further, I uh, hunt in heavier terrain where I don't want to lose my, my quarry, um, where I have a chance of maybe taking something bigger um, while I'm out on a small game hunt. For all those reasons, my preference is for the 25 and 30. Between the 25 and 30, I don't have a real preference. I, some of my favorite guns might be a 25, so I prefer that over the 30 just because of the gun, not because of the caliber. But I think both the 25 and 30 are, are very effective. If I was going to be hunting more larger quarry with it, I'd probably go up to the, to the 30. The whole argument about too much gun, uh, having a 25 or 30 uh, for small game, I think is is a bit absurd and I explain my reasons for that. You may agree or disagree and that's fine, but that, that's my reasoning be behind it. Uh, so anyway, um, I hope you found this video interesting. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up, a like, a share. Uh, I really appreciate that support. It helps me, it helps the channel uh, moving forward. And um, I have a lot more videos coming your way soon.